Okay, today I'm going to talk about the reversible process. So far in the module 4, we talked about a couple of processes, if you remember. We had an isobaric process, we had the isothermal process, we also talked about the polytropic process as well. Okay, the polytropic was the most general one, isothermal constant temperature, isobaric constant pressure. So now I'll talk about something else, it's a reversible process. Um, from the get-go, I want to be clear and say that these are very realistic. We, uh, we have a bunch of these examples in the real life, nature does them. And I'm going to say immediately that the reversible process does not exist in real life, okay? And so this is a pretty pessimistic start to a whole uh, segment, right? You may ask me, why am I then covering something that doesn't even exist in real life, right? And I'll give you two options. Option A is this. Just like the uh, TV series that you watch, they usually introduce a new character so that, you know, they can get a couple of episodes out of it too. This is the same thing. I check my, uh, you know, contact hours that I need to have, I run out of topics to cover, so I'm covering it just for that sake, okay, that's option A. Option B is this, we talked about this uh, because of the Calvin Planck statement, The uh, if I have a heat engine like this, TH, uh, this is my cycle, this is my uh, low temperature reservoir, TL, and I get some W net out, right, and this is QH, this is QL. Right. So the question was, uh, or rather the Calvin Planck statement said that I must have this. And looking at the efficiency, that means that the efficiency can never be 100%. So the question is, can that be 99%, 98%? What is the maximum? Okay. You're an engineer, you're working at a company. And let's say that you're working at a steam power plant, right? You have a 60% efficiency already. It's kind of high, but let's say 60% for now. Um, if the theoretical maximum is 62%, why would you even bother with it, right? The many investment to the increasing the efficiency, theoretically the maximum is 62%, then I don't really need to deal with it, okay? So as I will find out soon, the reversal process gives me the maximum efficiency that I can obtain. For instance, as you will find out soon, like internal combustion engines and all. So that's why I introduce you to the reversible uh, process, okay? So, okay, so I explained uh, what it is and what it is not. And now let me tell you what it is. So it's a process that can be reversed as the name recommends, right? But while I'm doing that, there'll be no change to the, either the system. In this particular case, let's pick this as a uh, system, right? This is my system. Um, I'm saying that I, it goes through a process. It goes from one to two, and it goes through one, and it's going through one to two. I will have no change in my system as well as the surrounding. Okay, the surrounding and the system stays exactly the same. Okay, so that is actually, you know, what I just said doesn't exist in real life, as I mentioned, right? I'll give an example, and I'll give an example of some processes that will be kind of can be replicated uh, or rather approached as a reversible process. Okay, so I have, uh, let's say that I have a pin over here, right? I, I had a pin, and I have some kind of high pressure over here, okay? It has the internal energy over here, and I have the P. So let's say that I just uh, let this pin removed. What will happen is, as long as the P is pretty high, this is going to shoot up right over here, and bam, it's going to hit here, right? It's going to stay right here, the, the piston. So now, if I look at the, you know, the boundary work, I'll get uh, PDV, right? We don't discuss that. So that will be the boundary work for this particular case. It will go all the way to the stops, and bam, it's going to hit, and it's going to stop. And this is called a fast expansion, okay, fast expansion. Now my reverse question is this, now it's coming here because the reversal process says that I'm sitting here, I can push this all the way down to here and I can come to exactly the same pressure, exactly the same internal energy and I, uh, that, that may be fine by the way, but what about the surroundings? It also says that there is a surrounding must stay the same as well and that is kind of a deal breaker, the second one, the surrounding one, okay? Because in reality, what happens is, um, if my piston is here and I'm pushing it down, I actually need to push it down more force-wise as opposed to it going up like that. The reason is I need to do more work on the system to pressurize it, okay, like uh, to come back to here. Um, and force, as you know, is equal to PA, so going back route will be much more force that I need. So then what it means is the internal energy may be the same, you know, one here, you know, I come up here, I come down, the internal energy may be seen, but surrounding will not stay the same. So for that reason, as an example, this is not a reversible process, okay? 
Now let me give you an example of a reversible process. And actually, let me replicate this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So you can see in here, I have the exact same thing, but now I don't have a pin, and I have this P over here being an equilibrium. Okay, the mass of the piston plus the outside pressure uh, times area will be the P inside of it times the area too, right? So that, that I know the pressure, so it's an equilibrium, okay? So it's a constant pressure process, constant P process. Um, and let's say that we are going through a quasi-equilibrium process, okay? We talked about this in module one, one and two, okay? So what will happen is, uh, this is going to be, you know, if I let it go, it will stay. I mean, I don't have even a pin, right? It's in balance. So let's say that I'm just shaving the mass slightly, okay? So let's say that the, the mass was 10 kilograms, right? Now it's 9.9 .9 kilograms. So what will happen is this, by nature, will go slightly up, okay? Then I shave another mass, go to 9.9 .9 kilograms. It will go slightly more, slightly more, slightly more, slightly more. I, I keep reducing the weight of it. So this process can be approximated as reversible, okay? Because I'm, you know, at very slowly I'm re releasing the weight. Once I put them in, like let's say that I am up here and the weight is eight, if I put 8.05, 8.10, 8.15, 8.20, so I'll be able to come back to the same. Obviously this will not be purely reversible, but it will be approaching a reversible process. That's option B, A. The option B, which actually is more important to me, is I can put, a, you know, uh, I, I'm keeping the weight of the piston the same now. I put a, let's say that the temperature over here is TH, whatever, something. Uh, and let's say that I have a particular, um, and the temperature very, very close to the TH, slightly, slightly above it. And I want to give some numbers, so we, you know, what we're talking about, 25. 0 0.000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, so, you know, I'm going to stop here, something like that, okay? So it's slightly above the 25. So what will happen is there will be heat transfer in here, but in theory, as this delta T is so small, the, the heat transfer can also come back and forth between these two, okay? And when I have this kind of a, a process, then I will also approach a reversible process. Again, it is not going to be reversible, and it's kind of, you know, I'm saying that the temperature at 25 will flow to 25 point or oh, 0, 0, 0, 0, something higher than that, okay? But it can be, um, you know, and we will use these, okay, in a moment when we obtain the uh, maximum efficiency a steam power plant, uh, internal combustion engine, or refrigerator can have, okay? So let's talk about, the, you know, for one minute, uh, what are the factors that affect the irreversibility, okay? There, the, you know, there, there is uh, factors causing the irreversibility. The reason is now I can investigate that these factors are in my analysis, so I can say that how reversible and irreversible it is. The first one I will talk about is the friction, okay, and this is a big one. You can think about this. If there's some friction over here, right, uh, you know, when I come back, the, the direction of the friction will be opposed to the direction of the uh, piston movement too, right? So in here it's going to be this way. When I'm coming down from here, the, the friction will be that way. So the point is, it will not cancel each other. Okay, the friction is going to cause irre irreversibility in my system. The second train, is the second uh, thought process is unrestrained expansion. So this can be think of this as uh, you know your tire went on the highway and your tire blew up, right? Not a good scenario at all, but let's say that's the case. Can you you know reversibly put the air that went into the atmosphere back into your tire? No, can't do. Can do okay. Um, the third one is I also gave example of that heat transfer through a finite delta t. Okay, so if delta t is big, let's say this is 25, this is 26, do you think the, 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 this 25 will flow to 26 without me any putting it work into it? No way. Okay, so I'm saying that this is irreversible, it's very, very slow, close to each other. Okay. And there's other ones, uh, you know, mixing. If I mix two fluids, you know, if I go back, it's not going to unmix them, right? If I have chemical re reactions, right, in my uh, system, that's not going to go back because I'm, you know, changing. Or inelastic deformation. 
which is a plastic deformation, right? So if I have a plastic deformation, the shape will change forever. I cannot go back and fix that, okay? Okay, I'm gonna stop here and I'll pick up uh, the Carnot cycle, uh, which will tell me the maximum efficiency that I can get, okay? Thank you for watching this.